You okay? You okay? It's okay, boy. Look, are you watching the minions? The minions. Hello, me. Love you. Love you, love me. Love you, love me. Love you. Love you. <laughs> love you. Love you. Tuka 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 tuka. Tuka 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 tuka. Love you, love me. One, two, three. One, two, three. <laughs> love me. Love me. See you. See you, man. Wanna hold my hand? Wanna hold my hand? <laughs> Crazy boy. Shalom finally got a new room guys. Oh my god, I had to sleep in the emergency room literally with one of these little sheets on the floor like that. It was like, literally like just laying on the freaking ground. It was so uncomfortable. He has an NG tube connected to him and then he has an IV right here. Um, they put the little no-no things on there so he won't touch anything. But like I said, he's finally in his room. I can finally sleep. That's gonna be my bed. They just did a contrast, I mean a um, scan with high contrast. And now we're gonna wait and see what the doctor says. Hey guys, what's up? So, um, I'm making this video on day two because day one I was, honestly, like for a couple of weeks I feel like I've been a hot mess. Um, I haven't been able to do anything because I've been worried about Shalom. He's been having some health problems and obviously like that's what i've been solely focused on right now and it's kind of hard to explain um i don't even know how to put it so basically um it's just so much it's so much i'm gonna have to like really sit down and write this down and put it in my notes or something in order to um be able to read it to you guys and explain it to you guys because it's a lot of stuff. Um, I look crazy right now. I'm exhausted. Lomi's exhausted, and it's just us two, and we just want to get the heck out of this freaking place already. We're tired of being at the hospital, but I don't know. Hey you guys, I'm Jackie Dubon Small for the ones that are new. Um, welcome back to my channel. Um, last time that I was sitting right here, I said that I was going to post more videos on Shalom and his autism and stuff like that. But, like the great John Lennon said, he says, life is what happens when you're busy making other plans, right? So that's exactly what has happened with my life lately. Um, I made a post on Facebook. You can also follow my Facebook. It's Jacqueline Dubon Small. I'm going to link it down below. Um, 
I wrote a post with Shalom's photo on it and he's and he was in the hospital and uh, yeah I just wanted to update everybody on it um I have been pretty much very open when it comes to Shalom since he was born and I felt the need because there was when he was born he was born with gastroschisis and the first thing I did was go on YouTube to look for a video so I can at least understand what was going on and there was no nothing so I was like let me take it upon myself to go ahead and make a video about my journey and um, so that's what I did um, and I remember like so many people commenting and I got a lot of like traction on the video and a lot of people um, messaging me on their commenting hey how's um, Shalom doing is he how is he now so I replied to everybody on the in the comments and I said he's doing well he's doing fine he's doing great because he was you know so that's what I what I would say um then things have kind of taken a turn and i'm it's just so it's just crazy to be honest with you so we're kind of going through it but i've kind of also waited a little bit to fully also process the situation because it happened so quickly and it's like so much information to take in that i'm like oh my god i was so overwhelmed by everything so i was like let me like fully like process everything and then put it together in chronological order so people can fully understand so i'm gonna get started and bear with me this might be a really really long video i don't know yet um so far i feel like i'm rambling but i hope you guys um um the ones that are interested fully get what I'm talking about so yes yeah, so if you're interested in this video guys um, then keep on watching okay so as you guys know um, Shalom he has he reached all his milestones on time um, he has always been like him and Samson Samson has been at the 99 percentile of growth rate from height and weight Shalom he's been at the 90th percentile of height and then around 75th to 80th percentile of weight so that's always been what it is um they've never been like kids that are overweight or anything like that but they're very solid they've always been very solid okay so moving on um the reason i'm even mentioning this is because Shalom on his birthday which was September 24th um he for his birthday he was a totally normal he had his four-year checkup right um and when i went to the pediatricians he was at the 90th percentile 40th percentile of weight so and then 90th percentile of height so that's totally normal average i'm like okay cool whatever 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 but i feel like i had to i had a little bit of a concern about his weight not because it was at the 40th percentile or anything like that, but because looking at him, I felt like he was just like, kind of like getting too skinny. So I was like, let me just, you know, voice my concern. Um, if everything's good, then cool, whatever. And um, so that's what I did. So then she said, okay, we're gonna go ahead and, and send a referral out to a gastroenterologist and we're gonna have him come for a weight check. So I was like, okay, great. Um, and then she also had said that she was going to get some labs drawn. So that's what happened. And um, me personally, I don't believe that there's any coincidences in life. And I've always said that before. And I remember that day when I was leaving the pediatrician's office. I was walking out and I was passing the front desk and then the lady stops me. And then she said, I just want to let you know that for some reason it says that he doesn't have any insurance. So I was like, really? Like, I said, but what about the others? And then so I had um, her check about my other children and it said, no, they all have insurance except Shalom. So I said, okay, that's weird. So she's like, so yeah, so just basically call, find out what's going on, and then we can backtrack it. So don't worry. And I was like, okay, that's fine. I'll take care of it. I remember right when I got home, I drove over there and I signed my paperwork, whatever, so I could turn it in, everything. And week goes by, two weeks go by, no insurance at all. 
Um, I missed his weight check. I missed the GI appointment. I missed his labs. Uh, to top it off, they also took away his um, his occupational therapy, his speech therapy, his ABA therapy because you have no insurance and just ABA therapy by itself, it ranges from $240 to $600 a day without insurance. So that like you guys do the math it's a lot of money on september 24th so around that 25th 26th that whole week he got taken off of everything and it's crazy because i had just made that video of telling you guys about my schedule and literally he's he doesn't have anything anymore um he's just home for now so that's pretty much what happened um it was very frustrating um i don't know how long that's gonna take for him to go back but yeah so there's that okay so moving on as i'm bathing shalom every single you know couple of days or whatever the case may be he just looks thinner and thinner and thinner basically the whole month of october he just starts getting skinnier and skinnier and skinnier and skinnier and i'm just like what it's like so then um it was just i don't know it was like too much okay so side note real quick um my best friend we are going on 18 years of friendship i love that girl so much she is my soul sister i literally literally love her so much um but the re reason why i'm mentioning her mentioning her is because um she is has been a nurse for eight years and she's about to receive her white coat as well um, so basically she is my personal doctor so whenever i have any any concerns i bombard her with everything and uh, i appreciate her so much because she will literally send me a million voice notes as to why this is going on what her thoughts on this are and so on right so basically that's why i'm i'm bringing her up um on this particular day i was bathing shalom and then i looked at him and i was like oh my god and i was i i, I couldn't even i couldn't do it he just that was not my shalom that's not what i'm used to that's not what we're used to i was like it really hit me really hard and um i like it was just like from one moment to the other you know and you start noticing you know when you look at someone every single day and you just kind of like whatever but this time it was like whoa so i went ahead and i took a picture of him and i sent it to my best friend and um her name's kelly so i sent it to kelly and I sent her the, the picture and she's like, Jackie, he is emaciated. Um, she went and I sent her, sent her the photos and she's like, yeah, take him to the hospital right away because that's not normal. So I looked at him and I don't feel comfortable posting the photos. Um, so I'm just going to kind of explain to you guys. Like he seems like very like brittle and very... Um, and the thing is that like you can't even tell when he has clothes on too much unless you look at like his collarbone because it goes deep in the photos his sternum you can see it a lot like just kind of go inwards um his rib cage like everything his arms are very very thin like the size of his um wrist when i go around it is the same size that i feel right here in this area like this and that is not how shalom has been ever so i sent the pictures to kelly and then i was on the phone with her and i talked with her for a while and i asked her to explain to me in chronological order if she was in the hospital setting um so i can prepare myself for all of it right um i wrote down tons of notes and then we have also like a shared note that we like update together um in our phones just in case you know she puts any new info or i have any new info and and so forth so pretty much it's safe to say that i was going in very well prepared but yeah so i looked at shalom and me and brian talked about it and we're like no he this, this is not right like brian he plays with him and he loves to like wrestle with him and throw him all the lately he has not been doing any of that because he seems so brittle and frail that we were like okay like he's like i feel like i have to hold him a certain way because i feel like i'm gonna like break him or something and the thing is that like he has so many layers of clothes because of the winter so or not winter fall but it's really really cold and um like it's been in like the 20s lately and stuff so obviously you know even your pjs they're like you know 
um whatever so he doesn't have to be like changing his clothes so even if he's losing weight every single day it's not like it's so noticeable because he'll be wearing his long sleeves his pants and stuff like that so anyways kelly had been telling me to also keep track with his like his energy so shalom he is a fighter when i cut his hair he will kick i mean hit back kick his legs, punch everything, hit like back and like I have to be like this and everything because he will literally probably break my jaw if I don't watch out. So that's um, kind of like what how he is um, when it comes to that kind of stuff. This day, particular day, right, when I was already having my concerns, um, I was cutting his hair and I did, I cut his nails, I was doing everything, you know, whatever, cleaning his ears. He didn't even fight me. He didn't fight me, he just cried. So he was like very like just crying. And then, but he didn't do any of the stuff that he does. So I'm like, okay, it's so hard to tell with anything with children, with autistic children, because they mask their pain, right? So with him this time, he didn't do anything. And I'm like, this is so not normal for him. So I was like, you know what? like. This can't wait anymore. He is losing way too much weight in such a short amount of time. Um, even like the week before, um, I decided to take him to the hospital. I said I'm going to take him on the, over the weekend um, because of Brian's job. So um, basically, I was giving him Pediasure. I even told Brian, I was like, are we not feeding him enough? Like, what's going on? And he's like, no, like, he's eating enough, like, for real. And I was like, I don't know. Like, I, I was just questioning everything. But the thing is that Shalom eats, you guys. He eats so much. Like, if he goes to, like, if he, if you bring him three pizzas, he will probably eat the full three pizzas. Like, in one sitting. Not, like, coming back throughout the day. No, like like crazy i've never seen anything like it like i've never seen a little boy eat so much in my whole entire life like i'm not even joking so i ended up taking shalom to the children's hospital right and i expressed my we got a room um i expressed my concerns on his weight loss i told him about him missing everything um during the month of october due to his insurance just because i couldn't wait anymore so when i was voicing my concerns i'm like why is he not receiving the nutrients like where is it all going and you know they heard everything that i had to say so that was that um for the ones that have been to the er you know they take a million years to um to do anything they take a million years to do like whatever the case may be it just takes forever i don't know why i always wonder why they take their sweet time um but no this time around let me get my phone because this is a lot so this time around they came in after a little time right and they said okay they all walked in and there was a couple of different people nurses i guess and they walk in and they were like, we're going to start an EKG. We're going to do x-rays, um, x-rays in the chest, x-rays in the abdomen. And we're going to do tons of labs. And I was like, uh, okay, great. You know, like they're, they're going to do what they're supposed to do. Um, but at the same time, like it's, she didn't even say what labs. She's going to do a ton of labs. And I'm like, so it was also scary. But at the same time, I'm like, I'm glad that they're doing whatever they need to do, taking the necessary precautions and whatever the case may be. But it was kind of like, okay, like, you know, um, I did talk to Kelly and when she told me how everything would go in chronological order and that's exactly what started happening. So as soon as um, I received the first x-ray, they started him on this nutrition therapy basically right so as iv was placed they came in and they said um more things were ordered so now we're doing ct scans with contrast they said that the doctor now wanted to put an ng tube on him so for the ones that don't know um an ng tube is a tube that goes inside of your nose and then goes all the way down and it kind of like sucks everything it like sucks stuff out it looks gross when you see it on the thing it looks just it's like comes out like very like brownish green i don't know but it comes it goes from your stomach to from your nose i want to say that like in a matter of like not in like two hours i had already seen like nine people from nurses to um couple doctors i want to say um 
x-ray people like we had taken him down for the x-rays um the stuff with contrast they came in and they did the ng tube it was just like a lot of stuff you guys and it was horrible it was horrible okay so here i was guys trying to be as strong as i can as strong as possible and while my baby is enduring all of this torture so shalom is a fighter and he will literally fight everybody off he's so strong and the nurses are like mom do you want to hold him down and i was like okay so here come like four other nurses because they can't control him so which I, this is something that's not new to me so i already know what to do so i'm laying down and he's on top of me so i'm holding down his um upper body and with my legs crossed over his legs so he can't move his whole entire body um, there's a nurse here holding down his arms. So then the other nurses are here trying to put the um, IV. Then the other one's the NG tube. Oh my God, you guys. It was literally insanity. It was insanity. He's screaming. It was horrible. And then um, he's like screaming and crying. Um, and then I just felt so horrible. Um, not only that, because but he like he's laying down right here and then he like puts his head up you know and then he looks right at me and he's crying already and he looks right at me and i'm like i literally I, it crushed my soul because it's it, i'm here you know and i'm supposed to be his mommy his protector his safe place and here i am holding him down being a part of this torture you know like you any mother that loves their children is gonna feel horrible so i felt so bad and there was so many times that i had to like stop myself from crying and or my eyes would get watery and i would just not i would just look away i would literally just look away and it was terrible 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 and another time too like there was a moment that he he took off his ng tube and then they had to come and redo it then there was one time that they had his iv and then i don't know what was going on with the iv and then they had to go do it on the other arm so i'm angry now because now i was like okay he took off his ng tube okay i get it right he's a child he's gonna pull whatever it was it was a lot but then like get it right like why are you guys not putting his iv correctly like now you have to do the other arm too you know like it was it was a lot um, imagine just a little child that is scared when the wind blows like if the wind blows he automatically goes like this you know because it's it's like if it's really really windy he will literally go like this and or i remember when scarlett and samson were in soccer we would go to the games and then they would make a goal or something and then everybody's like screaming cheering and all that stuff and he starts to kind of like panic and cry because it's too much for him right so he has like sensory overload and it's also terrifying um when we take him to ot or speech therapy the first thing that they do is take your temperature and he runs away from that as well and he runs away crying about it right so imagine how he must feel when this is going on like it breaks my heart just to think about it because i know what scares him and what like he's fine with so he's you know and he's our child and i have to be part of this and i don't want him to go through this like this is not what he should be going through you know so like he just turned four and he's been going through so much since he was a little baby and i'm like so so sick and tired of it you guys i really really am i'm also an empath so here i am absorbing all of this and there's moments of anger sadness confusion and then you know but then again how could i not even if i wasn't an empath how could i not you know this is my baby so it's inevitable at this point you know um, the smallest things were triggering me like crazy. So for example, like in, in, in one occasion, the nurse, she has to change the IV, like I said, from one, one arm to the other, because I don't know what it was that they had. So they put like what happened that went wrong. So they put the little um, rubber band or whatever they tie around. And one nurse 
looks at the other and she's like oh my god that is a great vein and she's like oh i guess with like a little giggle like oh well you know i guess we're gonna use this one and then even that just pissed me off so bad because to me like i understand that that's second nature to them and they're used to dealing with children and all that kind of stuff but it just was triggering me because again i'm part of this torture and they're giggling because it's a great vein like they can like y'all just keep your mouth shut and not say anything you know what i'm saying so that was like really triggering for me already and I just I don't know I I just needed to take a breather for a second because I was like this is too much like Jackie calm down like come back to earth and just chill out Here comes the first doctor and he comes and he the computer's right here and he starts showing me on the computer um the first x-ray so this is like I said when I start this is when I start getting answers so he comes and shows me the x-ray of his chest and abdomen area so okay let me get my phone he says shalom's stomach is so enlarged that it's taken over his diaphragm so he showed me the x-ray his stomach like you know how they say that your stomach is as big as your fist his stomach is so big it's so big that it's taking up like it's like squishing his other organs like it's insane it's insane so he says shalom's stomach is so enlarged that it's taken over his diaphragm um his intestines are full of gas that it has made the liver come up his organs are pretty much all over the place there is there was this one gray area and he said this gray area right here is not supposed to be there he's like we need to figure out what that is um he's backed up obviously um and he's also in an immense amount of pain and he is emaciated so they said that this is such a rare case that baby's born with his condition if they ever have any complications is during adulthood uh, if he's eating like he should we don't know why he's not receiving the nutrients right um so he said we're also we also need to get to the bottom of this because at this point and the worst thing ever having to hear that he's like we're gonna need we need to get to the bottom of this because at this point right now he's just wasting away what so i'm like I'm here coming in because of weight loss and never did I expect to hear all of this from the doctors it, like it was a total nightmare so literally like I'm gonna show you guys the x-ray because it was it's insane I'm like in shock because I'm like the last thing you want to hear is that your son is wasting away you know and it was so hard for me to take all of this in and i'm speaking more normal now before i could not talk about it without breaking down like that day was worst day ever one of the worst days freaking ever so the fact that his stomach is so enlarged and his bowel like even if you look up an x-ray of a child or a person in period you don't even like even my 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 friend kelly said like i don't even know where to begin jackie when i look at his x-ray it's it's nothing like what i'm you're used to looking at you know all right you guys so then another doctor comes in and he says that they're waiting for all the labs and tests to see that he doesn't have any disease um any kind of diseases Two of the ones that they mentioned were gastroparesis and the other one was celiac disease which is a it's an autoimmune disease um or they one of them had mentioned um if it some sort of like having to go and do some sort of operation so i'm like oh my god so here they are checking a million things like the labs and they're doing x-rays and he's on the ng tube and all these things everything that i said before and then they're checking for any sort of cancer tumors and mass um so you know then they have so like doctors for everything then here now they're telling me um some sort of disease gastroparesis or celiac disease so here we are talking about autoimmune diseases um and then if not then surgery so like 
you know, this is just like, honestly, even for an adult, this would be crazy um, coming in for something and then you just like get bombarded with the craziest amount of stuff. And like I said, this was literally in a matter of a couple of hours. It was not even like, it, it was, we got there in the evening and by night, like maybe nine, I already knew all of these things. And I was like, oh my God. Um, and like I said before, I am a really big research junkie. So I'm like reading and like everything and just like, then I'm on the phone and, and trying to find out stuff. And it was just, it was so traumatizing. It was so, it was because it, all of it was so bad. There was nothing that they were telling me that was positive. Everything was horrible. So then a new doctor comes in and then tells me, says his labs look okay again like i said i was seeing so many doctors so everybody's telling me something kind of different and then i don't see them again so the doctor that i see this time disappears the doctor that i saw the last time tells me something else i don't see them again i only saw there was like two doctors that i saw twice maybe that was it i kept seeing different people um a new doctor came in and then he tells me since his labs look pretty good then he says he thinks that he will be okay so I'm like, he's clearly in a caloric deficit, so now what? Like, he's gonna be okay? So, because his labs came out, like some labs came out good? So I, I, I asked him that and then he goes to Shalom and then he grabs his thigh, he grabs his thigh and he, Shalom's wearing his gown. Again, you can't tell that much when he has his clothes on. So then he, but what you can see his arms, his chest, his everything. So then um, his collarbone, his sternum, you know, all of that stuff. Like it's just, he's totally like so thin. So then he goes and he grabs his leg and he says, look at this. This is Chunk. You know, this is Chunk. He's healthy. He's fine. And I was so aggravated because it's not that I'm trying to like be like, no, he's not fine. Like he isn't like and it's so visible from the photos that i have and everything like i showed them the pictures they agreed with me that he was emaciated so i'm like why like because of the labs coming out like that now he's fine but yet y'all have him on an ng tube and everybody's shocked and oncology's on board and this doctor gi doctor's on board so i'm like this is crazy right so he grabs his thigh and says this is chunk if he was not receiving nutrients then he would be throwing up or having diarrhea like seriously like for real <laughs> so he's backed up they had told me he was backed up but to not pay attention to that too much because if you look at any human body you look at their stomach and they're all the, and everyone's gonna have some sort of something guys okay, so this just makes no sense you know um like you can see him and agree with me that there's some sort of like malabsorption issue going on here some underlying factors when it comes to all that stuff and i just feel like i felt and i feel like everybody just wants to turn a blind eye because they're not really like totally sure what to do next so they're kind of like just planning to leave it like this and you know i'm just like heated at this point um we ended up staying in the er um, they tried a suppository like at 4 a.m. It didn't work. Everybody was really nice. Everybody was really, you know, but I didn't just because they're being nice doesn't mean that I agree with the decisions that they're kind of like making. You know, basically I had asked one of them about a room and she was um, and because I was being admitted and she's like, well, you're one in 13. So basically, yeah, that's dead. So whatever. I ended up who cares, right? You know, because I'm worried about Shalom. And then I ended up sleeping on the ground, literally. Like I just put my jacket on the floor and I ended up laying there. And um, I remember like calling my dad and I was just like breaking down. Brian, he was not sleeping. The, he left the lights on in the living room and he literally was just sitting there so he won't be going to a deep sleep because it's overnight and he's just answering like, what's going on next? What's going on next? I'm like, just go to bed because it's just, you know, like I don't think I'm gonna see any doctors anymore.